Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to dive into the question of what is the best water sieve, or at least what are the top five? Now, one way to approach the question would be a subjective list based on theory crafting, or we could look at the popularity of sieve picks to basically crowdsource an answer. If we trust to popularity, it seems the top five are Vikings, Italians, Portuguese, Dravidians, and then Byzantines, which seems like a pretty strong list. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. But hang on, now I'm curious how that perception actually holds up in practice, and whether those are the sieves that win the most in the real world. This is a little tricky to answer with stats, given water maps are so unpopular that it's hard to get enough data to feel confident. So we're going to be using over a year of data from awepulse.com, which includes any and all ranked water games played between August 2021 until the most recent data available, which seems to be sometime last September. Now, having said that, the question of what is the best water sieve also kind of depends on what we consider a water map. Maps can range anywhere from having small lakes to being made up mostly of water, and even some that have terrain which is simultaneously water and land. Best water sieves is a murky label, and we may not all agree on which of those maps should count. To address that, I've decided to do separate lists for the three main categories of water maps. The first type is the full water maps, with the main thread being that you have to cross water to reach your opponent's starting town center. The next type is the swamp maps, which play out quite differently and can get messy with demo rafts attacking wood lines and galleys or fire ships fighting directly with land units. The third type is what's typically called the hybrid maps, where town centers are connected by land but with the added option to fish boom or contest lakes. So those are the three categories, and given the sample sizes due to the unpopularity of water maps, I would take this all with an ocean of salt, and treat this as a conversation point rather than a definitive list. Unlike what I usually do, we're also going to be including games from all ELO ratings here, but also because players above 1000 ELO as a group are roughly three times more likely to ban water maps, like islands for example, than players under 1000 ELO, so I don't mind the results reflecting here the greater interest from casual players. With all that out of the way, let's start off the list with the full water maps, including islands, archipelago, northern isles, and migration. At number 6, we have the Vikings, with a 54% win rate. They missed out on the top 5, but I wanted to include them, as they're the most popular pick, chosen about 15% of the time. Considering how many bonuses they have, it's admittedly surprising to not see them higher. You have cheaper docks, warships, a solid land economy with free wheelbarrow and handcarts, and the unique longboat. It's a lot of things that should be helping here. Even just to dwell on the longboat for a moment, they train faster than galleys, hold up much better against fire ships, are better at destroying docks, move faster, and stack better, so you can get more of them into a battle at once. Just saying Vikings have the longboat encapsulates a lot of advantages in that one unit alone. The main issue here for Vikings not performing better might be the lack of fire ship though, which means if you want to contest water and raid your opponent's fishing ships, you're pretty much forced into the galley line, at least limiting your early options. Fire galleys are designed to counter galleys without micro, and again, if we're having casual players in mind, the galley micro here is probably not tip top, making fire ships even stronger. Another thing I've seen players try to do is go full longboat against war galley or galleon, and players may be surprised to learn that's not actually a great matchup head to head with equal resources, and certainly not a good idea if the longboats are behind in numbers. There may be an element of overconfidence in taking fights based on the Vikings reputation that is actually holding them back a bit in practice. Next up at number 5 is the Malay. What's most interesting here is they perform worse and are picked less often as you go up in elo. Though, as I said, this data is weighted toward casual players, where it's really the 600 to 1000 ELO crowd that seem to do best with them. That might be because those games tend to be a bit more passive, and have more emphasis on the late game, where Malay really shine, as that's when their advantages kick in. Of course, they are still a naval sieve, with the harbour giving a lot of map presence in the late game, cheaper longer lasting fish traps giving excellent long term wood value, and extra line of sight on docks. They're obviously a solid water sieve, especially if you're okay handling their faster advance times messing a bit with your early build. Next up at number 4 we have the darlings of the water map world, the Italians. You have dock and university techs being cheaper, fishing ships having a 15% discount, they have cheaper advancing, discounted cannon galleons, and the condottiero being a great landing unit in imperial age. While the strength of their water bonuses is pretty self explanatory, the condottiero is also a nice feature here. Where a unit like the Champion has 4 separate upgrades to get caught up, and even the Arbalester has 2, the Condottiero comes out of the box ready to go, which makes for a really fast Imperial transition from water to land. 
Italians are the second most popular pick and arguably look the best on paper, but in practice just aren't performing quite well enough for top three online. Next at number three, we have the Byzantines with just over a 57% win rate. Ever since fire galleys entered the scene, Byzantines have been a pretty serious contender on water with extra attack speed and range on that popular unit line. They don't have the huge number of obvious water bonuses that Italians do, but more HP on your buildings means stronger docks, and their discount in Imperial Age is another handy bonus that can fly under the radar. Even just getting to Imperial a bit quicker and having fast fire ships for a short time against Castle Age units can really turn things in your favor. Altogether, it makes them a really solid choice on water, and they're a reasonably popular pick as well. As a fun fact, they're actually number one if you filter to 1200 ELO and up, again with some pretty weak sample sizes that I wouldn't take as gospel. Moving on to number two, out of nowhere we have the Sicilians with 58%. Admittedly, this is a smaller sample size of around 2200 games, and it's also a little peculiar on the face of it. Their only direct water bonus is the transport ship having more line of sight and a lower cost, as the Sicilians bonus damage resistance specifically excludes water units. Just to be sure, I double checked and couldn't find a single example of a slip up where a water unit was taking less bonus damage than it should have. Now it is true their transport ships used to have higher armor, and you might think their old win rate from using those to soak up damage is influencing their good results here, but all of this data is coming from after that change, so that can't explain what's happening. They're also doing better on islands than on migration, so this isn't just an early cheaper transport ship accounting for this. Outside of just a small sample size, one thing that does occur to me is that First Crusade and faster built castles could be an unexpectedly good bonus on water maps. If you're focusing hard on water, you probably aren't preparing any land units and maybe don't even have a barracks. So if someone sneakily lands on your island, the ability to quickly put up a castle and create an army of sergeants could help stabilize, or it could even be sent offensively to the enemy island. In an emergency, it would be easier to throw down a quick castle and get First Crusade than it would be to make a barracks, then archery range or stables, and create those units from scratch. Though it's hard to say if that's really what's going on here. The farm upgrades giving double the effect might also be leading to a lot of wood savings that end up winning games now and then. Of course, their naval tech tree is also quite good, so it's not that they don't deserve a mention here, it's just surprising they're number two. They've also been top five in high elo rating games as well, so Sicilians are definitely looking like a legit water sieve. And finally, at number one, we have the Dravidians with an over 58% win rate. This is actually nice to see as they've been doing pretty terribly on land maps since they were released. They receive 200 extra wood after advancing, fishing ships carry 15 more food, docks provide population space, and they of course have their unique warship, which crushes especially the war galley. On paper, they look very strong on water and it's nice to see the results pan out that way. Despite their great performance though, their play rate is actually lower than Byzantines, and about half that of Italians and a third that of Vikings. I don't know if they'll keep up having this level of success, especially as their reputation becomes more widely known and they're picked more often, but I do think they're the real deal on water maps. In fact, looking at the civilizations with over a 50% win rate, it really is most of the ones you'd expect, making the list feel pretty reasonable. If I gave a subjective list, it would probably be similar, with maybe Sicilians down a bit and Italians and Vikings a bit higher, though it's still interesting to see the results, and I definitely find it more thought-provoking than the play rate list. So that's the water maps in the purest traditional sense, but now let's move on to the swamp maps. These are ones that have a significant amount of area traversable by water and land units, leading to a lot of messy interactions between naval and land, especially with demo ships. Meeting this definition and have been in the ranked pool, we have Bog Islands, Golden Swamp, and Water Nomad. On those maps together, the top five are Dravidians, again making an appearance, succeeded by Berbers, Italians, Gurjars, and at number one this time, Vikings. Notice Byzantines and Sicilians have dropped off the list, as fire ships and whatever was helping Sicilians do so well on water maps doesn't seem to translate the same way on swamp maps. Malay are also much worse here, which is interesting, since I would think harbors could be a big asset on maps like this, giving you a defensive building for 150 wood. It's notable that Dravidians, Italians, and Vikings again show up, with Vikings doing really well on especially Water Nomad and Bog Islands. There's a bit of internal consistency here, supporting those three as some of the best water sieves. On the other hand, Gurjars at number two is pretty interesting and carried almost entirely by how well they're doing on Golden Swamp. Despite having a decent amount of water on that map, it's really the cavalry sieves that are dominating. 
So that's the swamp maps. And now let's move on and check on these so-called hybrid maps, which are ones where you have lakes you would typically dock to add a fish boom, while often going mainly for land military units. The three popular ones featured on the ranked ladder are Four Lakes, Scandinavia, and Kowasin. This time we actually have 150,000 games, about three quarters of which are Four Lakes. So arguably this is just the Four Lakes top sieve list. Interestingly, despite water being a focus of the early action, we have almost a completely different list of civilizations. The top five this time are Persians, Berbers, Japanese, Lithuanians, and Huns at number one. The Vikings and Malay are actually below average in their results, funny enough, and Italians and Byzantines are hovering around a 50% win rate. So you can really see that despite water being present, it's an almost completely different set of bonuses and civilizations that excel. In fact, it's pretty clear being a good water sieve in isolation has very little predictive power of how good a sieve will be on four lakes. Japanese and Persians are probably the easiest to explain here, as their faster fishing ship work rate and dock work rate bonuses respectively are helpful for booming on safe lakes. Outside of fishing bonuses, there's also a real cavalry sieve theme coming through, and it's understandable that map mobility would be important, giving players starting towns are fairly exposed and you have to travel to different lakes to try to dock. The Berbers' faster moving villagers are probably also helping them a bit here as well. So if we had to make a single list of what are the best water map sieves, what would we get? Well, using a weighted average of all three types, the best performers are number one Dravidians, followed by Italians, then Vikings, then Berbers, which did well on both the swamp and hybrid maps, but not so well on the pure water maps, and finally at number five, the Japanese. Take from that what you will, but personally I'm going to be sticking with Japanese for the better fishing ships, galley line of sight, and delightfully cheap camps, but there were still some interesting results there that I wanted to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.